In episode 26, I'm going to show you how to do SEO and rank your blog posts with an ethically proven strategy. You'll also learn how not to do SEO. If you want to follow along with the process check by check, then you can download a free checklist at moneyjournal.com forward slash episode 26. Learn from my $200,000 mistake. Let's go. In 2009, I quit my job and started an online business with no technical knowledge, marketing savvy, heck, I didn't know a thing about business. But I was 23 years old, living in my parents' house with a ton of student debt and nothing to lose. After many failed attempts to sell through forums, Craigslist and eBay, I knew that there was a better way to make money than hustling 18 hours a day for an hourly wage of $3.33. I quickly saw how powerful search engine optimization was. I didn't know where to start, so I took the $6,000 that I made and I invested it all into an SEO company that promised me first page Google rankings. Long story short, I never heard from them again and I lost every last penny. I had no money, no friends in the online marketing space, but a new passion was ignited in me to figure out this whole SEO process. Back then, I knew that I had to include my keywords in my content, use H1 and H2 header tags, and get backlinks from other websites. I did all the on-page SEO. For off-page SEO, I tried everything from blog commenting to web 2.0s and forums, and I got a little bit of referral traffic, but this did absolutely nothing for my SEO rankings. Finally, I hit the holy grail of link building back in 2011 private blog networks. That year, I banked over $200,000 in profit from search engine traffic alone. I even automated my entire site so I was working at most one hour per week. Life was good. Little did I know that Google was going to crack down on these black hat techniques. It was 2012 and I was looking at which car to buy next. Before I hit the Mercedes and BMW websites, I checked my Google Analytics to find out that I got slapped in the face by a penguin. My traffic went from nearly 80,000 monthly unique search engine visitors to a measly 20,000. Retail revenue dropped from about $20,000 per month to a measly 3,000. And it kept on dropping. I just lost $200,000 overnight. WTF. Here's the deal. Black Hat methods might make you a bit of money, but Google is getting smarter and it's not about outsmarting them. If you want to build a business and get long-term traffic that's profitable, you need to play their game and get really good at doing it. And today I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process to do SEO the right way. Now there are two factors to SEO. The first one is on-page SEO, then we have off-page SEO. On-page SEO has everything to do with the content that's on your page. This is important because it lets the search engines know what your page is about. And this is the easier part of the two. You have full control of what gets placed on that page and you can edit it at any time. Off-page SEO, on the other hand, deals primarily with link building. You need to get high quality backlinks from other websites. Now, if you wanna do this the right way, then this is where it's gonna take some blood, sweat, and tears. I want you to think about it like a popularity contest. A link is like someone voting for you. They're telling search engines that they vouch for this website and the content that's behind the underlined blue text. The key to doing SEO for your blog is to create content that is link worthy and share worthy. If you're writing about how your cat pooped in the litter box for the first time, then good luck getting links or shares. Why? Because no one cares. There are three elements to a blog post that make it share worthy and link worthy. Number one, it has a history of social shares. Two, your content can be positioned in a helpful way. Three, you can write about 2,000 words about it. The first step is to find a blog topic that already has a proven track record of getting social shares. So go to buzzsumo.com and search for a keyword phrase. For example, if I was a chiropractor, then I might search for a common pain point like back pain. If you look to the right hand side, you can see the total number of shares that this topic has generated. Start analyzing the popular ones for commonalities. Oftentimes, you'll notice that multiple articles have a similar keyword in it that you may not have thought of otherwise. 
Let's look at the results. This one from Beachbody has over 100,000 shares. Most of them come from Pinterest, which tells you that quality images on your website get pinned like crazy when it comes to back pain or yoga stretches, right? And it makes sense logically. This one here got a ton of Facebook engagement and look at this keyword, exercise. Now, if you scroll down, then you'll see this one here, another post about yoga stretches, which had over 25,000 social shares. Last but not least, if you do a page search for the word low, then we can assume that a lot of people have low back pain and are looking for exercises or more specifically, yoga stretches that can help relieve that pain. So now you have three ways you can position your article. Yoga stretches, relieve lower back pain, and exercises for lower back pain. One last thing, we'll order the popular post by Twitter shares now to see if there's a history of sharing there. And boom, you can see that the idea of lower back pain exercises and yoga are popular there. Now, why do we care about Twitter? Easy, it's because we can find the exact people who shared these articles and we can contact them about the article we'll be creating. More on that later. On to the next step. You need to create helpful content. Ideally, you want it to be better than the other posts that got shared a ton. So let's take a look at a few of the popular ones. The first one is from Beachbody. You can see that the post itself is pretty helpful and it's also actionable. But you'll also notice that it lacks depth. There's definitely room for improvement here. Next is the one from Expanded Consciousness. One simple exercise to improve posture and relieve back pain. You can see that it really lacks in the visual aspect. And again, there is very little depth to it. Finally is the one from the New York Times. And this is more of a research-based article rather than one that is actionable. Now the idea is to make something better than all three of these, right? So you might take some of the factual information from the New York Times post and create an exercise routine that supports this article. So instead of nine yoga stretches to relieve hip and lower back pain, you might make one that has 31. A potential headline might be 31 scientifically proven yoga exercises that will relieve lower back pain. The next step is to do some keyword research. Since I'm quite certain that this will be a pretty popular topic, I'm gonna throw in a few keyword phrases that come to mind. Here are the results. Relieve lower back pain has 1900 searches per month. Yoga exercises for lower back pain has 1300 searches per month. Get rid of lower back pain has 390 searches per month. And I could spend more time doing keyword research, but I'll leave you with this for now. Keep in mind that these are rough estimates that Google provides and you'll likely end up getting a lot more traffic than this since you'll naturally rank for other keyword terms that are less competitive. If you don't have access to Google's Keyword Planner, then you can try tools like SEMrush, Ahrefs, or kwfinder.com to get this data. Cool, we have a hot topic and we know that we can provide more value in the social hemisphere than these posts. But the question now is this, can you compete for these keyword terms in the search engines? There are multiple tools that will give you an idea of keyword competition scores in an instant. Ahrefs is my favorite, but it requires a paid subscription. If you want to see how it works, then you can try kwfinder.com that will give you a few free searches each day. When looking at the scores, you'll notice that this one has a keyword difficulty score of 56. And if you remember, links are arguably the most powerful metric for ranking in search engines. There are two other metrics I want you to use when looking at keyword competition. They are domain authority and page authority. For example, if I was running nutritionsecrets.com, then you can see that the domain authority is 38 out of 100. Now, if we compare it to our competitors, then you'll notice that we're far off in the race for any of these keyword phrases. But is it possible to compete against these other sites? It most definitely is. But SEO is a long game that takes time and patience. If you want faster results, then you'll either want to find a different long tail keyword phrase with less competition but you'll also have less visitors each month. The other metric page authority tells us a bit about the page too. If you look at this one for relieve lower back pain, you'll notice that the page authority is significantly less than that of the domain authority. The thing is, it's easier to raise page authority than domain authority. You'll also notice that these aren't crazy amounts of links at the top here. 
So Keyword Finder shows that this one here has only 25 links. And I know you're willing to work for your results, so we'll use this target phrase in our example. Let's move on to the next step. It's time to create some great content. Now, great content is actionable and detailed. And I'll say it one more time. Great content is actionable and detailed. And the byproduct of actionable and detailed content is usually length. I'll leave the copywriting to you and give you a few tips you can use to maximize your engagement. Number one, write in a conversational tone. Two, use words like you and I. Three, write in short sentences and short paragraphs. Four, have an introduction that reels them in. Five, use images at least every 300 words. Since we're talking about SEO, let's talk about the on-page SEO factors. The on-page factors that you have complete control over are the meta tags, the URL structure, the heading tags, and the content. The meta tags are what you see in the Google search results. And this one here is called the meta title, and the other is the meta description. What you wanna do is to add your primary keyword phrase in both the title and the description. Now, while this doesn't have as great of an effect on SEO as it once did, you can see that Google bold certain keyword phrases that were in your query. And this attracts attention to the eyes and will help increase your click-through rate in the search engine results page. And guess what? Click-through rate is a Google ranking factor and you want to do everything you can to increase that metric. Next is the URL structure. Take your primary keyword phrase and use it in the post permalink. So for example, yourdomain.com slash relieve dash lower dash back dash pain. Next are the heading tags. If you're running a blog on WordPress or almost any other content management system, then the title of your post will automatically come out as an H1 tag, which stands for heading one. Now what you wanna do is to front load your keyword phrase in the title. So instead of 31 scientifically proven yoga exercises that will relieve lower back pain, you can front load your keyword phrase and use relieve lower back pain with these 31 scientifically proven yoga exercises. Finally is the content. You want to use your primary keyword phrase within the first 150 words. Also, there are other related keywords that will naturally come out. We looked at one before and that was get rid of lower back pain. And I almost want to recommend that you not do any more keyword research for this because you will likely be tempted to use phrases that don't come out naturally. Write as a human being and after you're done writing the article, you can do more intensive keyword research and see where other phrases can fall into the mix in a natural way. Don't get into the habit of keyword stuffing with a purpose to rank. Keep in mind that Google looks at behavioral metrics like time on page and can sniff shady tactics like keyword stuffing. Finally, onto your promotion tactics. Content creation is the foundation of your promotional efforts. If you're promoting crappy articles, you're not gonna get any links or social shares. Once you have it all set up, there are four promotional tactics that you can do that will skyrocket your SEO. The first is to contact the same people who shared the other articles. So going back to the beach body example, you'll notice that the majority of shares were from Pinterest. So go to Pinterest and type in the article name inside quotation marks. Now normally the one that had the most engagement will be the first to show up. And sure enough, you'll see that this pin has 1.3 thousand repins. Next, click on the pin and scroll down to see all boards that it was pinned on. And you'll see a list of all the different boards it's been pinned on. Now you need to contact them. Click on the three dots here, which will bring up a new menu and click message this person. Here you can send your pitch. It might look something like this. Hi name. I noticed you share Beachbody's article, nine more yoga stretches to help relieve hip and lower back pain. Since you loved this post so much, I thought you might be interested in checking out this pin, which has 31 exercises that are backed using scientific data from the New York Times. Hope you enjoy it. Cheers, Sam. Then Pinterest has a cool little feature where you can drag the pin directly into the chat box. Next are Twitter searches. Twitter is a little harder to send everyone tweets because it shows up in your profile and also Twitter is a swipe fest. So to get their attention, you need to send them an email. If you have a pro account with Buzzsumo, you can go to the article that you're targeting. For example, if we look at the New York Times article here, you'll notice a button that says view sharers. 
you can export this list of people who've shared it on Twitter, find their email address, and send them the perfect pitch. And I won't repeat myself. Just watch episode 25 over here if you want to know how to find anyone's email address and send the perfect pitch. Keep in mind that as you're sharing these articles, you're getting it in front of more people. And the more eyeballs you can get your content in front of, the more links you'll be able to achieve as they write new posts. Last but not least is to go and earn yourself some links. Since we've done our research, we know that this topic is popular and valuable to people. Social shares show us that, right? And we also know that the keyword competition level means that it's a post that has potential to get linked to a lot. So what we need to do now is to see who's linking to these posts and send them a pitch. But here's the deal. Just because it does well in social, it doesn't guarantee that it has produced a lot of links. What will prove that there are links are the top Google search results. Do a Google search for your keyword phrase. You can ignore the feature snippet or knowledge graphs and copy the URLs of the top three results. I'll take the one from WebMD as I'm sure it has generated some links. Click on the link, then check to make sure it falls into the category that we're looking for. Yep, a low level article on managing back pain. Next, you'll need a tool that can reverse engineer where these backlinks are coming from. I use Ahrefs and it's worth every penny. Just throw the URL into Ahrefs and you'll see there are about 71 links from various referring domains and 150 backlinks in total. Perfect. Now click on the backlinks menu here and then you'll see a list of all the people who have linked to this particular site. So from here, you can start contacting different blogs who have linked to the site. For example, if you go to bladder-cancer.net, then you'll see the link here. The post title is Dealing with Back Pain and they linked out to WebMD right here. Now you'll notice that it's a pretty thin article. If you weren't able to find their email, then go to the contact page and send them a pitch like this. Hi name, I stumbled on your post today, post name, and love the value you had to offer. I noticed that you mentioned taking a hot shower relieves back pain. This is definitely a great method to relieve pain temporarily but there are actually exercises that are scientifically proven to heal low back pain. I recently wrote an extremely thorough guide with 31 different exercises that can completely get rid of back pain. Let me know if you wanna check it out. Cheers, Sam. Now we didn't send a link in the first email and it's because we don't want to make it look like spam from the get-go. You'll find that response rates are much better than throwing them the hard sell in the first email. Now when they respond with a, sure, I'd love to check it out, then send them an email like this. Great, here you go, link. Perhaps it might make a good fit for the post to add more value to your readers. Either way, I love what you're doing at blog name. Keep up the great work. Cheers, Sam. Now this strategy works really well, but it's a numbers game and you can expect to get about three to 10% of the people to add links if your article is great and your pitch has to be even better. An easier way to get links is to look for roundups and resource pages. You can go to Google and search for keyword phrases like in URL colon roundup and then your niche name, in title weekly roundup plus in quotation marks your niche name, in URL resources plus niche name. Here are the results that come up when I type that in with in URL colon resources plus back pain. You want to find resource pages where they're linking out to other sites other than their own. If we click through to backactive.ca, then you'll notice an area that says links to other sites. Now you do the same thing that we did before. You find their email and you pitch them. Here's an example of a pitch you might send. Hi name, I stumbled on your resources page today and downloaded your PDF ebook. Great stuff. I noticed that you had some other great resources in there about back health. I recently published a new article with 31 scientifically proven exercises that can relieve lower back pain. If you're open to suggestions, would you mind if I send it over to you for your review? Cheers, Sam. These tactics and strategies take time and your SEO efforts will take time to come to fruition. But once you start seeing results, there will be no turning back. Woo, episode 26 was a long one but I hope you got a ton of value from it. 
The show notes and all the resources mentioned here can be found over at moneyjournal.com forward slash episode 26. Now, as an additional resource, I have a PDF SEO checklist you can download, print, and use as you start doing SEO for your blog. Now, if you thought this video was helpful, then hit the like button and make sure to subscribe for more actionable marketing videos. Now, I wanna hear from you. Do you think doing SEO this way is worth the hard work and effort to reap the long-term rewards? Let me know in the comments below. Finally, if you have any questions, feel free to ask below and I will do my best to help out. Until the next episode, remember to take action because every minute counts. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Loud.